So you may remember a lot of the stuff from a few videos back, a uh, thrift haul that I did. It's quite a bit of ornate things that are just really easy to bring out. They're just cool pieces already by themselves. And then we're just going to use some paint to really amp them up. This frame I really liked. It was just a little too much with the giant areas of rust and the teal was just a little bit too, too contrasting with that. So I'm just doing a bit of a dry brush. You can see I dip it in the paint, I tap it off in the lid and then I will work it around the frame. A lot of times you'll see me go around the corners because I'm fine with there being a little bit more paint in those areas. And that way when I get to the center portions and when I'm trying to do the raised areas, I'm not getting the most amount of paint on. I have the lightest amount of paint on my brush in those moments. So you'll kind of see me work around things. The first place you put your brush is going to have the highest concentration of paint. So you just want to keep that in mind. Now these candlestick holders were, oh man, they're just everything that I love. They had so much texture and ornate goodness on them that I just wanted to make sure all that was brought out. And I didn't even hate the color that they were. It was just too muddy. So I'm doing the same thing with the dry brush and we'll add some more details and stuff to it too. But that way I'm keeping the depth of them and they'll stay in the low points and then just by doing the dry brush over the top, I'm getting all of that detail to really, really pop out and still keeping kind of like that old kind of crustiness that they already had. And these, man, just everything about that is good. As soon as you put the dry brush on it, you can just see everything come to life. And these shelves you saw, they're the ones that I kind of let Lucas just paint on and do whatever he wants while I'm painting to give him something to do. Um, I decided I was going to use them in the guest house. And so I'm just doing the same color that I did the cabinets and then we'll do some extra stuff to them too. But that way I can use them for some extra wall storage. And they're cute, so it'll work well in there. This is just Goblin Gray, which is a very dark teal. And I'm just going to go all over these with that. While I have that color out, I'm just going to take it and just do some pouncing just to add some color and texture to these candlestick holders. These are little wall hang ones. They do tapered candles. Um, somebody had spray painted them white. So instead of going over the entirety of them, I am going to use the existing finish just to be kind of a base to what I'm doing. With these old kind of metal ones, I like having tons and tons of layers and texture. I think that makes them look really cool at the end. For this corbel, I just got out the gray and it's just a dark gray. I'm going that, that will be my base coat to work off of. I find that these pieces sell really well for me in kind of the dark gray stone look with a hint of gilding. So that's usually the route I'll go with these because they do so well that way. And same for this guy. He was just, I don't know. I loved this piece so much. It's so random. I ended up looking this up and finding what it originally was. And it was in fact a mirror. So 
I found a mirror and that's what it's going to be but we're gonna give it a paint job because in its current state it's not fantastic. Now we can get back to dry brushing that we have our dark base coats and it's gonna just do the same thing where it just brings out all of the details on these this is a really cool corbel my mom found. It was actually made of clay. It was so heavy. Oh man. But just really cool. Because it's easier to just do these things in kind of spurts. So I did a set of them in gray and then I'll do the set of them with the dry brushing just to get that stuff kind of in an assembly line. And then anything else where I'm kind of just not sure what I'm doing. I'll just kind of go piece by piece and figure out how I want to do it, but this was easy. So for this little corbel shelf, this was actually a solid wood one. It's so cute. I wanted to go all the way white with this and then distress back some of the wood, but then I'll zhuzh it a bit as well. Now the little rose wreath, soon to be mirror situation. Um, I wanted to use a smaller brush for this because it's so incredibly ornate. And the brush that I'm using specifically is very, very soft. It's a synthetic brush and it's kind of, it's kind of messed up at the head. I've used it so much and it's kind of been scrunched around. It gives a really, really soft finish when you uh, dry brush with this. So you can see all the texture on the petal there instead of just the edges. It'll get all that stuff without putting too much paint down because it's so soft and it's so well used that it's kind of, you can see the bristles are all spread out and everything. So it just gives a really, really nice finish on this kind of situation where you don't want to impart a lot of paint, but there's tons of details and you know that if you get too much paint down, it will destroy the detail. So if you've got like a really old wonky artist brush, don't, don't throw it out, save it for dry brushing because it works really well for this kind of stuff. Now I knew I was going to use a lot of guilds on this because I like to use multi metal tones when I have options to do so. So the flowers I can go kind of rose gold and sometimes coppery and then the leaves I can go gold or you can do silver. I'll kind of mix things up and that way it gives interest without being too crazy like painting each individual item. So you're just getting the high points and just adding a little bit of something fancy without it being so crazy. I just, I love the way that this looks when you just do the multi-tones on different things. It's so fun. So I did want a little bit of the gold around the main frame part but I didn't want it to be super intense. So I'm just using a little bit with my finger and then I'll actually buff it out as much as I can and then also use a brush to kind of help buff it back too. That way it's not very strong, but you can still see hints of it. So you can do this step before you do gilding if you want to. I'm doing it after because it's going to help tone back all of the gilding as well. So figure out where you want to do this, but I'm taking dark wax and that's what I'm sealing this with. And it will also give it some extra depth and again, tone back all of the gilding. 
If you do this immediately after you put your gilding waxes on, it will take off the gilding waxes. So you want to make sure that your waxes are fully dried before adding this, unless you want the look where it kind of pulls it back quite a bit. So you kind of just have to get to know your products and how long they have to sit to be fully dried, how much you want them pulled back or fully left on. And if you want full potency, again, you want to put this wax on first, buff it off, let it dry and then add your gilding wax if you want full power of the gilding waxes. So I got that all on and I just think it looks so rich and then once you start buffing it back you'll kind of see the other tones and everything coming out and man I just think it is so pretty so for the mirror I conveniently found the exact size round mirror on Amazon so I ordered that up and I'm just putting it in with uh, super strong Gorilla hot glue. Now we're moving on to the next thing, which is again, more dry brushing on. So this was actually already kind of um, a gray tone and they had some like faux rusty bits in it and a little bit of just varying colors in the metal already. So I didn't want to take any of that away. I really liked it. I just wanted to brighten it up to go with other decor that I have. If you guys don't know, I already, I kind of have like a, <laughs> a theme of things that I like and so that's what I sell and that's what I have because it's stuff that brings me joy and I find that it just helps to do that. So I love this wax because it can also be activated with water and so you can thin it out a lot and use it with a brush and kind of do some cool drippy stuff with it as well if you wanted to. Um, you can also get brush strokes with it or you can just you know leave it in its waxy state and put it on with your finger and that works out well too. It is nice having all of those options so I think it's a really fun wax to use. And I just kind of am sporadically putting this. I don't want it to be perfect. I want nothing on this to be perfect. I want it to be just very all over the place, random as much as I can get it. And now I can go in with my other pieces as well since I have all the waxes out and you know, it's back to the assembly line, just moving piece by piece through and highlighting where I want to. Some pieces I'll hit all the high points and make it look very uniform and other things where I feel like it should look old and kind of chaotic in how it's placed, I will do that. I just kind of let each piece tell me what I think it needs and that's, that's how I go. Sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I use brushes. You just, you know, you do what you want.
you guys remember that flash blue color so this piece i am still i wasn't ever sure what to do with it my mom picked it up for me but i added the flash blue to it and then i was like oh this would be great over the white so i'm just going over all the things that i want and i put that flash blue color over it and man that stuff is incredible and then I'm going through and sealing everything up with the dark wax that I want. If you don't want a dark finish, use clear wax or whatever sealer that you want. Again, I'm using the dark because I like that it tones everything back. So it's not so bright white of the dry brushing that I did. It kind of softens that. It softens the other colors and makes everything kind of come together. Oh, hi. Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades. And we've got some finished pieces. So I got nearly everything finished um and over here the rest of the stuff is over there we will hopefully have everything listed soon it's the hardest part because i'm measuring things and weighing things and making sure everything's going on the right way but anyways it's been a long because i have two hauls in this week's website upload so it's just huge but i wanted to show you these ones were like my all-time favorites Obviously the pillars, which we already knew was going to be just, they're incredible. And I love the way that they turned out. They're much lighter and brighter, but still have that old world feeling. And then this little gem, the rose wreath, I found an exact perfect sized mirror to go in it off of Amazon, which was wonderful. And then these two guys just, I just always love them. I think they're incredible. And then... You know it's just been fun it's really fun playing around with all the different textures so this has a few different guilds on it just to kind of not have it be so flat and then these have a similar finish as well but they're still different and these ones are a different direction these guys are a different direction which are just really fun I don't know it's just really fun playing with all the smalls because then it's like oh I can do this later like this, I really want to see this on a piece of furniture. And I might have one right now that I can do it to. So we're going to see what happens. I'm hoping that I can do a similar recreation of like this color palette because I love it so much. Anyways, thank you guys for following along. If you want any of said items, they are on uh, elegant-upgrades.com. And as always, you guys are wonderful. And I'll see you next time.